So many people have been asking how much did we pay for this boat that was abandoned for 22 years? And that's what we are going to talk about today. So, let's get started. I'm Roberta. And I'm Luca. And for the past year, we have been building our own tiny shipping container house, so we can travel around knowing that we will always have this little place that we can call home. But guess what? We just found our dream project before we expected, this abandoned sailboat. So, we are going to stop building the house for a couple months to bring our boat back to life. And then, we're going to go back and finish the house. Well, since the beginning of this channel, his idea was to build a boat from scratch. Well, but then someone put sense on my mind. I mean, that would be awesome to build a boat from scratch, but it would take so long that we, we would sail maybe in 10 years from now. And then she convinced me that we might be able to find a opportunity, let's call it like this, of a boat that was under construction halfway and at least we had like a hole ready and safe to build the rest. So we would have like halfway, we would at least have like a safe, good structural hole to work with. Yeah. We almost bought a hole that was empty inside and that was our plan. Yeah. But we found this boat. <laughs> yeah. This boat is actually in much better shape than it seems. A lot of people have been coming saying that this boat is going to sink that this boat is not worth what we paid. No one even know how much we paid, but I mean like, this boat is in a much, much, much better shape than it seems. This hole is a... Uh, hot galvanized. Hot steel. galvanized steel. That means that almost there is no rust. When I say almost, of course, yeah. in some spots, the galvanization didn't go well, but it's easy to fix and we are already working on it. I don't know if you can see, but the boat's like, it's not as you saw last week. <laughs> That's another thing. We are shooting slow the videos because it's so many projects at the same time. So we have a lot more already recorded than it seems and people are like, so you guys shouldn't waste time cleaning the boat if you have only three months. But we need to clean the boat to know what we have. And of course we did a lot more than cleaning already, but we didn't edit the videos. We are just adding one by week, right? And we need to clean the boat to discover what we have and what we still need to buy. And, and discover other things we need to do that we didn't know. Yeah. Another question is survey. Of course we understand that you need to have a survey when you buy a boat. This boat was a really, really specific situation where the owner didn't want to buy the boat. We got so many to messages sell, to, to sell. sell. Yeah, to sell the boat. <laughs> we got so many messages these past two weeks saying that, oh, how did you buy this boat? Because I tried to buy this boat eight years ago and the owner didn't want to sell. No one could buy this boat. And this being said, if we, we started to point out bad things and trying to put the price down, we would lose the deal. And we think it was worth for the money he wa was asking for. So we decided to just pay what he wanted without discussing too much and without digging too much. Uh, even though we checked the boat before we, we bought it this, we came here one month before and we we did all the... Yeah. yeah, basically we spent three hours with the former owner going inside every single corner of the boat. We touched every single thing the boat has with the former owner, explaining all the systems, it's showing all the problems we need to fix. He explained everything. It's not that we bought like out of the blue the boat. And he explained the good things and the bad things that we would need to fix. And we did like a list and we talked with a guy that makes surveys in Brazil. Yeah our friend that was here helping yeah. us to fix the boat. So before we bought this, we already knew kind of how much money yeah. we need to spend. Of course, yeah. some extra money. We of course, you always money. find surprise, yeah. but this is a, we call like a controlled risk. Yeah. There are risks involving on buying a boat that was 22 years on the heart. Of course there is. But this boat was so well built that to be honest, the price we paid, we bought a hole. If we wanted to build a hole from scratch just like this, would cost three, three times, times more. Yeah. So basically we bought a hole with a lot of things as perks. Yeah. That's the way we see. <laughs> the furniture is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we got a really good deal. The amount we paid for this boat was 50,000 US dollars. Basically in Brazil, we paid 210 of our money to 210,000 reais and 50,000 dollars. For Brazil, this is a really good cheap boat. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, just to let you know, Brazil, the, in Brazil, the law doesn't allow us to buy used boats outside of the country. And we have not many options of used boats to buy. That means the boats are expensive. And we 
more expensive. More expensive, more expensive. And we want to have the Brazilian flag because if you have a uh, flag that's not from Brazil, you need to go away from the country for a period and then you need to come back. No, and, and you're not even allowed to do that for too many times. Yeah, so we want to have a Brazilian flag and we don't have too many options. And $50,000 50, $50, yeah. for Brazilian prices is really good. Yeah, just for comparison, there are another two boats just like this one for sale in the Caribbean and they are say they are they are on the water not the, they are on the hard but they they can go to the water they are fine and one is asking for 80,000 US dollars the other one is 90,000 US dollars we expect to expend, spend 100,000 dollars total on the end of the refit that means if we spend 100,000 dollars this is going to be almost a brand new boat because we're going to change everything you need to change we're going to fix everything yes. we need to fix we are going to do all the stainless, stainless? No, no. The, the mess oh the mess yeah all the standing rigging? rigs and rigs. running rigs we're going to do all the rigging again and the painting again and the, the engine is actually moving yeah. it's actually turning and so we didn't try yet but it's gonna well, be we are waiting for the batteries to arrive to try the engine we bought the batteries straight from the factory yeah. so we are wait, waiting for it yeah. to arrive and just so you guys be more relaxed we are in a marina that's <laughs> a working marina it's like a boatyard in one of the main centers of uh, boat building in Brazil yeah. so we have professionals of any kind you can imagine here and we have supervision we have people helping us we are not doing we're not crazy we're not two kids just like trying to get killed on the ocean we are trying to make a boat sea worthy this boat was meant to go to Antarctica when the owner former owner bought the boat so it's a really really strong boat it's with time, you guys will understand. With the time, we are gonna show all the details on each week on the videos. We intend to have one video every Monday, 10 o'clock Brazilian time on the morning. So we always are gonna show all the details, but it takes time. It's, it's, we cannot show everything in one week. People think that this was something like, it's, it's understandable because YouTube, there are so many YouTube ch channels showing like, we just bought a boat, we never sailed before, we just bought out of the blue. This is another question. We had sail experience. We this is our third boat. Third boat. Yeah. We had two boats before this one. Duca actually sailed since he was a child. Yeah. So when I was a child, my family's summer house was a sailboat, a 35 feet for like almost 15 years. So basically, we live in the island. We always been around boats. My grandfather built boats before, so it's not something that we are it's not thinking family, about yeah. it's not something like crazy these stupid kids just yeah. got their parents money and just just bought a boat and just playing around with dad's money no, that's not true money. not many people know that but i went back to the universe to be an engineer to save money to buy a boat and that's the reality that's the truth and we had a long-term plan and the way we afford to this boat wasn't with youtube money yet and wasn't with the savings we had for the house. The house we built with our savings, that we worked hard, saved money, and all the house is paid with our money. But one year ago, we started making some money with YouTube. So the money from YouTube helped the house already and made our saving last for longer. But there is a sponsor, one big cool sponsor. Yeah, that's... Uh, that's connected with the name of the yeah. channel. Finally, after almost two years, we are going to explain you why the channel is called Odd Life Crafting. So sit, relax, get a coffee because the story comes down. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's going to be worth. If I was you, I would sit and just, it's, it's a cool story. I, we've been wanting to tell the, this story for a long time. Our patrons already know. We told our patrons because they deserve. I'm not going to say anything because it's... It's Duca's story, so I'm gonna just sit here and listen for I don't know how many times. So, yeah. so basically, my dad, 43 years ago, was an exchange student in the US, in Pennsylvania. And in high school, he used to have a friend that was his age. They were like 15 or 16, and they were good friends. And then my dad came back to Brazil and they lost contact. When I was, I, I say 12, but I think I was like 10 years old or 11, he started sending letters to his friend again and this guy went to Florianopolis where we live in Brazil for the first time and he loved Brazil and after that he came to Brazil for years every single year sometimes once sometimes twice sometimes three times a year and this guy was the guy that taught me how to speak English this guy was the owner of the first camera I touched in my life the first picture camera I, I used it actually 
And I grew up as a friend of this friend of my dad, right? So he would come to Brazil, my dad would be at work and he would say, take him to go to downtown and take him out. And that's how I learned English with, with this guy. And then when I was in uni at university, uh, yeah, I, I, my first degree, when I was 19, I went to business school and this guy used to own a company in the States and I went for a inter inter internship. So I worked for four, three months at his company, just during my summer break, doing an internship on his company. And during 10 years, and I used to work in his company, live in his house, and he would show me like everything, take us to restaurants and eat the whole thing. He, he was like his kid. Yeah, but not just me. During 10 years, he had 18 interns from Brazil in his company. Every single one of them was either my brother, my cousin, my brother's friend, my brother's brother's friend, friend of a friend. All 18 know each other, all friends of friends, and we, are all, we all know each other. And then, I think 10 years ago, he had a surgery and he believed he could die, so he did a last will. He wrote a last will. No one knew about that, and he didn't die. Five years later or something, after his last will and after his surgery, he died out of a heart attack. And then we found out that all 18 Brazilians were on his last will. And that was just weird. It's crazy. It's just like, how are we in someone's last will in this state? It's just, yeah, crazy story. But just to make short, we waited for five years to know how much we would, he would give us because he needed to sell his company and his house and his apartment and blah, 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 blah. Someone needs to sell. Yeah, someone needs to sell everything. <laughs> but I knew I would get some money from that. And when we decided to start our YouTube channel back in Indonesia, we didn't know if, I w if the money would be, I don't know, $5,000, if it was going to be $50,000. We had no idea. But we knew that once the money come, came, yeah, once, once, once I received the money, this money was going to go towards our dream boat. As we knew, the money from the last week would go towards the boat and our dream for the channel was in the end to have a boat and sail around with our boat and live on the boat, we decided to put the name Odd Life Crafting because my friend's name is actually Odd. So basically, our first patron is Odd because he is the guy that paid for, I don't know, 70% of this boat. So basically they both cost $50,000 out of that, he paid for $36,000 of the boat. Yes, we are lucky. Yes, we are lucky. Yeah, need to speak a little bit louder because yeah, I'm sorry for the noise. It's just we are in a working marina, so someone is working. <laughs> yeah, so basically, he paid for $36,000 out of $50,000. The rest, we used to own a 26-foot boat that when we went to un the university in Sydney, Australia, when I went to my master's degree, I sold half of the boat to a friend and then I own, we own half of a boat, so half of our other boat was another $13,000 maybe. Yeah. So that means 36 plus 13. We needed like $4,000 or something like that. That our patrons paid for. Yeah, <laughs> thanks guys, you guys are awesome. So basically we paid for the boat with my friend's last wheel, with half of our, our 26 foot sailboat, plus our patrons support. And that's awesome. And now you guys must be wondering, so you're crazy, you have just the money for the boat and now you are screwed because, you know, this refit's gonna cost maybe the same amount we paid for the boat. Yeah, could cost. But remember that I said that we intended to build the house with our money? Actually, we made money on YouTube and then we didn't need to pay for the entire house with our money. Right now, all the money that goes to the house is YouTube money. And thanks to you guys that watch all our videos, that's how we can afford to fix this boat. Because to be honest, right now, if the views keep going as they are, we are going to be able to pay for the whole refit with YouTube, them, YouTube money and that's just a dream. Because even before I wanted to buy a boat, I wanted to produce documentaries. This is a dream of mine since 2005 when I went to the Film Festival of Marrakesh, International Movie Festival of Marrakesh in Morocco. And it's been a long, long time plan and goal for life. And now it's just everything coming together. And that's yeah. so cool. So 
what we are doing now, it's all our dreams combined. Yeah. It's the dream of producing documentaries, the dream of photographing everything, it's the dream of sharing it's everything. Together. Yeah, it's, it's all and together. To share with you guys, it's amazing because yeah. we have so much, so many commenters. So yeah, it's ex inspiring. It's, yeah, to, this relationship yeah. is just crazy because we just. It's crazy to post a video and one day later 10 pe 10,000 people saw it and commented and, and gave you advices and opinions and it's just crazy. And if the dream goes forward and one day we travel to different countries with this boat, we're gonna meet a lot of people that we are just like distance friends now. Yeah, yeah. virtually friends. Vi virtual friends, yeah. And we were afraid of changing from the container house to the sailboat, but since we start to shoot the sailboat, the channel starts started growing a lot. Yeah, a lot. And yeah. we are excited. <laughs> really excited. But no I worries. Mean, no yeah, but we are gonna finish the house. Don't worry. <laughs> That's not the point. We didn't give up on the house. The house is. We have a really. How do I explain that? Uh, the house is also another dream of it's us. Like a, it's like a little kid. It's, it's, it's like our, our, one, our first kid is the house. It's another dream We of put us. a lot of love on the house. We worked so hard on the house and we will finish the house because we wanted to come. We want to live in the boat, but we want, also want to have this small, tiny home base, like land base that we can go back and visit the family and, and you know, the whole thing. And a tiny house always was our dream yeah. also. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, we're trying to live fully and trying to live what we believe and that's 100% honest we are not shooting videos about this boat to make money on YouTube we are not doing we didn't start a YouTube channel because everyone has a YouTube channel and now is the uh, we are gonna be youtubers that's not that's not the thing truly is not the thing and it's just thank we are really really thankful for people that watch really really thankful because otherwise we would not be able to keep doing because we had some savings but it wouldn't last for forever, you know? And we would need to go back to a regular job, in an office job, and that's not, I mean, nothing wrong with that. But right now we are full-time and like really committed to this project. And as you guys saw it, we have a lot of work ahead. <laughs> oh, by so, the way, no, you can, no. No, 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 no. I would say just so let's go to work because we have a lot to do. Yeah, but just, no, one last thing. Some people comment that we are not going to finish this boat in three months. We know we are not going to finish this boat in three months. We are going to do what is necessary to put the boat back in water and to take the boat back to where we live so we can finish the house and then we can finish the boat. So it's painting, engine and the mess we are going to... And some uh, pipes and some... Uh, Electrician and pipes. And pipes and just some uh, water supplies and stuff just to make sure the rubber won't break. And we can but live inside of it? We are not gonna have you guys know right, we're gonna we're not gonna fix the mast yet. We are gonna take without a mast. So we need to be quick, otherwise we are gonna run out of time in the marina and here can become expensive. But we need to be thankful because the marina they are so helpful and they are that's we couldn't be in a better place right now to work on the boat. That's for sure, awesome. we are gonna miss this place. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna miss for sure. We also want to thank our new patrons for this week. Yeah, but this week it's hard to write somewhere <laughs> and it's hard to remember all the names because the list is too big. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, so thanks so much, Pierre. Thiago. Alex. Nico. One, two. And also, and? our that, that was a really amazing surprise. When we lived in Sydney back in 2016, I used to work delivering food by push bike, by bicycle. And my good friend, my best friend from Deliveroo, the company that I used to deliver food with, was a guy from... Ukraine. Ukraine. <laughs> Oleksi, we are so, so proud and so happy to have you as a patron. That was just... Yeah. When we got the email <laughs> saying Oleksi, I was like, no, no, no. Is this Oleksi real? Yeah, that, that's actually, we talked to him and that's him. That's yeah. so, so cool. We are so, so happy. It's yeah. pretty cool. We, yeah. we get so excited when a friend yeah. welcome, it's on board with us. Yeah. Thank you, guys. We really, really appreciate the support. Yeah. You are awesome. And yeah. see you guys next, next week. week. <laughs>